Now that we've seen how to make hypotheses in symbolic form with the symbols and the H zeros and H ones, of course, our next step is to take a whole bunch of words in a paragraph, a problem setup, and translate it into those symbols. So this is, can be very tricky because, of course, you have to be able to analyze an entire paragraph's worth of data and break it down into the, the bare bone symbols of what it means. Okay, so let's read this. Active Management of Labor, AML, is a group of interventions designed to help reduce the length of labor and the rate of cesarean deliveries of babies. According to a recent article, the average cost of having a baby in a U.S. hospital was $2,528. A random sample of 200 AML deliveries had a mean cost of $2,480 with a standard deviation of $766. Do the data provide sufficient evidence to conclude that, on average, AML reduces the cost of having a baby in a U.S. hospital? Okay, so we're going to need a null and an alternative. So you start off with your H0 and your H1. And I just copied and pasted a symbol in here. So let's think. We're looking for, are we talking about, well, let's think about the parameters we have. We could talk about proportions, percentages, that's P, means, averages, that's mu, population variance or population standard deviation. All right, so when we go back in here, we want to look and see the question, see which part are we trying to make a, dis a decision about. It says, do the data provide the sufficient evidence to conclude that on average, mm, that's kind of a key word, AML reduces the cost? Oh, okay, so let's highlight that. So on average, AML reduces the cost. That's the alternative hypothesis. So, and it's telling you a whole bunch of stuff. They want us to reduce the cost. So is the mean less than? And then the question is, reduce the cost from what? What are you trying to get lower than, right? What was your assumed population value? That'd be the 2528, right? So is it less than 2528? Or is it still 2528 regardless of AML? Now, the 2528 comes from right here. It's the value you assume to be true. Notice it says it is. The average here, this word is, right? So average, of course, is the mean, and is means equals, and 2528. So they're basically telling you the null hypothesis there, and then they're talking about reducing on average from that. So you might be thinking, well, couple things. Why didn't we use the 2420 or 2480? That's your sample. So your X bar is, oops, here, let me bring this in. X bar is 2480. It's not your mu. And it's not your assumed mu. It's this 2480. And matter of fact, they tell us us is 766. So if we want to actually do the calculations and stuff for the test, which we'll learn about in the next section, that's what those pieces of information are for. But they're not actually for, for constructing the hypotheses. They're for doing calculations later. So X bar is 2480, S is 766, but the assumed value is 2528. And you assume it's that unless you can prove that it's less than that. So always remember that the null hypothesis always has equalities in it. Then the alternative hypothesis is always the same number as your null hypothesis. These other numbers that they're giving you, you're going to use to test that value of 2528. All right, let's read the next one. According to the National Household Survey on Drug Abuse, 13.6% of 18 to 25 year olds in the US were current marijuana users or hashish users in 2000. A psychology researcher at a university believes that the proportion of 18 to 25 year olds who are current users of those drugs has changed from the 2000 percentage. They conduct a poll of two, one, excuse me, 1,283 random people in the U.S. in that age group and find that 205 of them are currently um, use those drugs. Do the data provide sufficient evidence to support the researcher's claim? Okay, so we got to figure out what we're assuming to be true. Okay, so let's think. We assume what to be true. We assume that the old values are true unless we can prove them otherwise, right? And a key word in all of this is the word change. That word is giving you your alternative hypotheses, which I will continue to mark in yellow. So that means that they're talking about having an alternative hypothesis that just has a not equal to sign. Now we have to think about what our proportion, or what our 
parameter is. In this case, it's a proportion. The proportion that we assume to be true is the 13.6. So we assume that the old data of 13.6% of US um, 18 to 25 year olds is true unless we can prove it otherwise for the sake of this researcher. All right, and then the word 2000 in there, that's not anything, that's just the year. Okay, so we assume, and we're talking about proportions, you can see percentages flying all around the problem. That's kind of a sign. When you see percentages, that's a proportion question. So we assume that the p-value is 0.136 unless we can prove that it's not 0.136 because change does not imply any particular direction. This is a two-tailed test. So you might be wondering, well, what's all the other information? Well, the other information they're giving us is this 205 and 123 business, 1283 business. That's actually X and N to create a P hat. So similar to how 2480 and 766 were the sample data um, up in this problem above that gave us this sample information that we could use to test it which we haven't gotten to yet, that's in later sections. That's what the P, um, or excuse me, the 205 and the 1283 are. And remember the 2000 is just a year, so that doesn't mean anything at all. So the way this works is you could, if you wanted to, construct P hat. So note, and then P hat is equal to, is equal to x over n, if you recall, which is 205 over 1283. And you could find a decimal for that, and you would use that in order to test what they're giving you. But it's not actually either of the hypotheses. It's actually sample data instead. So the hypotheses are what was given. Right? Same thing with this one. Right? This value right here is not needed. The x bar value. They just gave it to you because you would use it later on in order to test the information, but it's not actually needed to create the hypotheses. All right, so there's your answers. The p equals 0.136 and the p is not equal to 1.136. Those are your two hypotheses. All right, last one. A fast food chain states that the standard deviation of the wait times for customers in the drive-thru is three minutes. Well, all right, so they're talking about standard deviation, right? And they're talking about three is three minutes. So they're giving you the null hypothesis right there, what you assume to be true. Consumers' rights agency thinks the variability in wait times is more than that, that it's not consistent. And they obtain a random sample of 27 drive-through wait times and find the standard deviation of 3.9. So that's sample information. So it's not part of the hypothesis, hypotheses, it's part of how you would test it. Now, where's the alternative? Well, the alternative is in this word right here, more, well, more than. So they think it's more than, that would give you your alternative hypotheses. So our null hypothesis is three minutes, sigma equals three minutes, because this is standard deviation. Our alternative hypothesis is the more than, so we're gonna say that sigma is more than three minutes. And then the S part is the 3.9, which we're going to use to test that. So it's not part of the hypotheses, it's part of later stuff. On a side note, you'll notice you can include the units um, for the null and alternative hypotheses. Percentages don't really have a unit, but you could turn it into a percentage if you so desired. So you could either use the decimal of 0.136 or you could use the 13.6%. Let me, let me put it this way, 13.6%. Either one of those is fine. So it's, it's up to you which way you want to write it. Um, I generally use decimals because decimals are what are going to be used in the formulas later on.